coach came down on the wire to start with an opening statement? Uh, heck of a college basketball game. Um, unfortunately, we came out, you know, on the on the wrong end of that. Uh, but I'm extremely proud of our guys, uh, proud of our coaching staff. I thought we prepared the right way. Um, we had every intention to come in here and win a game. And I thought we uh, did that for probably 38 minutes um, tonight. And credit to them, they made some key plays down the stretch. Um, I thought the game was decided on the rebounding. Uh, the differential there it was just way too much on the road. Uh, and the free throw discrepancy, you know, 32 to eight on the on the free throw line is, um, you know, it's unacceptable on our end. Um, you know, and we got to be better in those areas. I thought those were the two separators, but um, I told our team in the locker room after the game, um, that's how you're supposed to play. That's how you're supposed to compete. Uh, we just got to be a little bit better in, in key moments and make that next kind of jump, you know, as a program. But. I'm excited about what our team can do down the stretch. I think our, our best basketball is still um, right in front of us. You guys did a really good job defensively against their backcourt. What, what was the key? Yeah, we, we, we game planned a little bit different in terms of um, some of the coverages. Um, you know, we, we started one of our big guys on Marshallonis and every ball screen he was involved with, we, we switched. Um, you know, a, a credit and I think a a uh, key piece of our team is we have a front court that's pretty versatile from a defensive standpoint. And I thought uh, Duedo and Jonathan really kind of took that challenge to uh, be able to guard on the perimeter. And, and those guys really executed the game plan. So um, you got to try to pick something, you know, to take away from St. Mary's. They're, they're really good when they get you in rotations, uh, especially in ball screens. Marshall Onis is one of the best players in the country. Uh, operating in ball screens and so we made a decision as a staff to um, go with that um, you know I thought Saxon had a really good game and, and provided some separation um, you know down there in the paint he's a he's a load and a handful and um, really good player but they're they're a really good team you know and well coach you talked about the disparity on the free throws and the rebounding how much of that is just they're a really physical team yeah they're arguably probably one of the most physical teams in the country um, and that's a credit to them, you know. Um, you know, they, they've been doing that to teams all year. I think they're first in the country in, in, or fourth in the country, something like that, in rebounding margin. First. first um, you know, and so that's not news. You know, that was the first thing we put on the board when we talked about the game. You can throw the game plan out the window uh, if you're not going to be tough and you're not going to rebound. I thought we were tough enough. Uh, for majority of uh, the game, we just did not take care of the glass the way that we need to, especially on the road. Do you think they don't get maybe enough credit for how physical they are defensively and on the boards? No, I think they get all the credit they deserve. <laughs> um, you know, they've been doing that. You know, they are what they are, and um, they've played the same way. They don't change. Um, they have their system, and they thrive in that. And um, so, no, I think they get. Um, you know, all the credit. I think they're one of the best teams in the country, um, you know, and, and so all credit to them. Um, but I love my team and I love what our potential is um, going forward. Chris, you, you know the history. What, by the way, what were you doing in February of 2003? Where was I? February 2003. <laughs> I think I was a third assistant at the Citadel okay. in 2003, if I'm correct, where I was coaching in Texas at a Division three school. I think that's where I was. Yeah, that, that's, that's the last time you guys have won here. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't make me feel any better. I'm sorry about that. Um, but I'm going to say, I mean, look, your record is 21 and seven. You mm -hmm. got a solid record. That the one glaring emptiness there is the quad one win. Mm -hmm. How do you swallow this one, knowing that this one? You've had a couple of, of quad one games that mm -hmm. were really close and can get over the hump. How do you how do you deal with this one? And then the next one you get, you turn the tide. You just gotta, you gotta do it. You know, you gotta do it once. And it's amazing how that works. You know, when you figure out and you do it one time, how that kind of just snowballs. Um, our team is, is new. Our team is, hasn't had a lot of time together. Um, I know what we were when we started and I know what we are today. And we have made tremendous progress as a group. Um, but as I said, there's so much potential left for our team uh, just kind of figure it out.
you know, we got to keep working and keep chipping. And uh, I firmly believe that uh, we will be playing our best basketball when we go to Las Vegas. And that's all you can really ask for. They did a pretty good job on Mobo. How do they take him out? Uh, I thought the physicality kind of bothered him a little bit. The foul trouble in the first half. Um, you know, he had two fouls relatively quick. Um, it was hard for him to probably get in a, a rhythm. I uh, tried to get him in and out with those two fouls, um, you know, and, and I thought he was better in the second half, but um, he finds other ways. When he doesn't have big scoring nights, he can affect the game as a facilitator for us, and I thought he did that um, well in some of those stretches where we played and went on a, a good run in the second half. Um, but he's an all-around player. It's not just about scoring with him. He, he rebounds, he defends, facilitates. So um, one of those nights, he'll, he'll bounce back. It's not really about tonight, but soon you play Gonzaga, mm -hmm. and you're playing them at the Chase Center, which I'm sure I understand why you're doing that. But as a coach, do you, do you, are you nervous because you lose your home court edge? Uh, we're treating it as a home, a home court game. You know, we've already played a game in the Chase Center. We performed well in the Chase Center against Minnesota earlier in the year, and. Um, got a really good win there against a really good team who's performed well in their conference. So um, we're looking at it, uh, you know, to put our, our league and, and our program in a different light, you know, and, and um, it looks different when you're playing a national TV game um, at the Chase Center where the Warriors play and hopefully it can be an event for the city, you know, and we can turn this into a thing that has the opportunity to grow. Uh, I initially probably did not like the idea, um, but the more I thought about it, I thought um, sometimes you got to think outside the box and, and try something to try to elevate your program, and um, that's what we're trying to do.